Hi everyone, this is Aaron, and today we're going to take a look at the Droid Pro. The Droid Pro is kind of what I take to be the answer to the BlackBerry, uh, but the Android version of it, maybe for businesses. Um, it looks pretty, I don't know, mediocre in pictures, but I'm uh, from things I've read, it says it's pretty nice in person. So, this is an interesting phone. Let's look at what comes in the box according to the side. We have a lithium-ion battery, 2 gig micro SD pre-installed, SIM card pre-installed, and there's a SIM card because it's a GSM CDMA and UMTS phone for world phone usage, three international adapters, your USB data charging cable, global support kit, product safety and warranty brochure, and quick reference guide. Nothing on the back other than the picture, and on the side we have some uh, different information, nothing really relevant to what we're doing here. Uh, let's go ahead and open this up. Now the screen is a 3.1 inch screen at 320 by 480 megapixels or 480 has a 1420 milliamp hour battery <clears throat> this is a capacitive touch and um, I have to say it does look better in person here's the here's like a chrome side there's your volume rocker up down USB micro USB there you have your microphone on the bottom uh, 3.5 millimeter headphone jack on the top looks like maybe a sleep wake button and I'm not sure maybe a Maybe a picture button. On the back here, <clears throat> we have our SIM card, micro SD. This is a 5 megapixel camera with dual flash. It doesn't, oddly enough, it doesn't do HD video. It comes close, it's 720p by 480, so technically I guess you could say it's 480p, but really it's not uh, like the others. But I guess as a business phone, you might not need that. Let's set it aside and see what comes in the box. So here we have an global support guide has some numbers and a pin on the back I guess uh, we have what looks to be the back of the phone so we'll use that we have a wall plug with um, our micro USB so I guess it comes with a separate sync cable okay here's our USB cable with micro S our USB Here's our battery, and I'll go ahead and open that now since we're going to use that and power this up here in a second. Here is, now, forgive me since I've not really been around the world much, but this is an adapter for overseas, not from around here. I'm not sure what that is. We also have another one, different style. Maybe someone in the comments can let us know. I'm just not familiar with where these, where these are from. And we have one more. I think... I don't know if that's France or England, I'm, I'm not sure. Um, but we have those three different ones, and we have some product information, so important consumer information, tips, hints, and shortcuts, more information, and product safety and warranty guide. So let's put all this stuff back in here, except the back. Actually, let me take the packaging off the back. This is in a little Ziploc baggie, that's kind of cool. There we go. So just a plastic back. Now it's kind of using, uh, I don't know if this is a support frame, this chrome, but it looks really nice. Let's go ahead and pop the battery in. It's, it's weird to see a SIM card in a uh, Verizon device. I have heard of that before, but it's just kind of odd. So I guess technically unlocked. Uh, you could use it on AT&T, but that'd be kind of weird. It's a lot of you probably prefer Verizon, so let's pull that off of here. Let's pull the front off, and let's power this on. I do have to say, it does look like a nice professional business device, like a premium BlackBerry, something like that. Um, I don't know if you can see this, but the keys are actually angled. They kind of have an angle to them. It's kind of nice. I don't know how that'll be to type on, but you know, you're going to have to like this style phone. For those of you that use a BlackBerry and thinking of going to a Droid and really want that kind of keyboard, that might be a nice alternative for you. I think it's, uh, like I said, I'm going to check it out and try it out. The uh, screen is powering on now. It weighs 4.73 ounces. There we go. Or 134 grams for you not in the U.S. Uh, it's a 1X EVDO Rev-A. And it also supports HSDPA, 
at 10.2 megabits per second and HSUPA at 5.76 megabytes per second. And um, there we go. So, wow, that's pretty quick. And it, it has the TI OMAP processor in it. Let's go ahead and activate it. It'll take a moment. Let's see what we have here. Okay. Welcome to Verizon Wireless Programming. Para Español o Prima de Estrella. To program or activate your phone, press 1. Okay. Here we go. Now, as I mentioned in the previous video that I did about the uh, Samsung... Here we go, let me turn it down. If you'd like to listen to setting up your voice. So while I was... Uh, doing the previous video, the Samsung Continuum, uh, I actually mentioned how I'm quite happy now that I have a new tower turned up in my area. I get much better reception here. Now I know a lot of you have uh, commented on some comparisons I've done between the iPhone and different Droid phones with, with signal and that sort of thing. And I really did have a pretty crappy Verizon signal, but now I have a great Verizon signal here. Uh, it's probably the same or stronger than, than the others, AT&T, T-Mobile, that sort of thing. So. I don't know why it hadn't been turned up here, but it is now. And uh, I, I never dropped calls, but I didn't have a great signal as well. So. Let's see what it's doing. It's still activating. It takes a moment. And I kind of wanted to just show you this. I know some of you like to see the, the whole boot up set, uh, process. There we go. Phone's activated. Really responsive. We'll skip that. I know how to use this. Okay, I'll be right back. I'm going to sign all this in, and we'll just take a quick look at the interface, uh, and we'll do some follow-ups later on. So here's the default screen. I actually set up everything. Oh, powered off here. I have to say these keys have a nice premium click to them here. They don't feel loose. I mean, they may loosen up over time, but the phone feels nice in your hand. Let's go ahead and unlock it. Uh, no. Well, we can do that later, I hope. It has uh, haptic feedback. Please wait. Please say a command. Please uh. say a command. <laughs> Alright, well, maybe I can't get past this. Let's just uh, set that up. Next. There we go. So. No swipe on here. <laughs> All right, let's see. Okay, there we go. Adding Facebook. I have to say the the pictures really don't do this device justice. It's it's too bad. Okay, done adding accounts. Oh, I guess I could have probably just done that before. Go to home. File. Opening. <laughs> Interesting. All right, let's see if we can get out of here. Please say a command. I don't want to. That's strange. It won't let me out of that, but I don't know what the deal is with that. Go home. There we go. All right. So I don't know what the deal was with that, but so here's the uh, the interface, app browser. Ooh, nice and smooth. This feels really responsive. I mean, I've only used it for a second, just as you've seen. But let's open the browser. All right. Well, you know what? I'm I'm gonna go play around with this. Um, we'll do a day one follow-up, of course, like I normally do. And uh, thanks for watching. Please continue to subscribe and comment. Appreciate it. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.